Hallelujah. I tell you, I want to invite you to Wednesday night here. <clears throat> we are just being blessed beyond measure. Uh, we're learning so much about God. Um, we, again, we just finished the 32 names of God and what they mean. And when you pray to God, it, it brings on a whole new meaning when you understand, oh, he's got that covered too. I'm praying about this, always oh, got that covered too. I don't know about you, but in my life, I have multiple problems at the same time. I have multiple issues at the same time. They're called life. They're called, you know, everything is good and, and, and your finances are, are going to pot. And then the next thing over here, not only that, but, but your wife yourself are not getting along that good and uh, and then it's something else and then it's something else and then then you got health problems and it seems to happen not in threes but in hundreds seems like sometimes it just compounds and so uh i want you to know if you come we're we're, we're doing a lot more in-depth teaching um on on uh, wednesday night you'll be we, you'll be blessed i can assure you get to eat physically and spiritually amen, amen. And so, uh, good food, amen, good fellowship. Uh, today, I want to talk to us. We've been on, in the last few weeks, we've been talking about and, and, and dealing with, the last couple of weeks anyway, um, about healing. Now, most of the time, everything is on the physical, physical. Uh, but I want to show you today that, uh, I don't know, you may need to be healed mentally. You may need to be healed emotionally. Come on, your emotions play a big part in who you are. Amen. And, and God just, I want to show you in the Bible where he specifically talks about the emotions and the mind being healed. I don't know about you, but sometimes, well, I do know about you because you're just like me. Um, we sometimes as people carry things around for weeks, months, and years one statement somebody said years ago that still cuts us deep when we hear that statement or when we think about it. Can I get a witness, anybody? Amen. Amen. And so there's some things that, um, now, now the new generation calls it, you got triggered. <laughs> I can think back on some things in my life where I got triggered. I can think on some times in my life where I triggered my dad. And he helped me to untrigger. If you see, you catching what I'm laying down? <clears throat> Amen. That has nothing to do with this message. Um, but they call it triggered today. I don't care what you call it. It brings, brings up some old feelings. I love Westerns. Some of you know I love Westerns. I mean, golly. There's got to be a big movie screen in heaven with Westerns playing on it. <laughs> Glory to God. And I was watching a movie with Kevin Costner and, and uh, Robert Duvall in it called Open Range. And, and Kevin Costner, in his, he's trying to do better, but in his former life, he was a bad person, killed a lot of people and all that. You know, that's good stuff, Westerns, amen. Uh, amen. And so, uh, but he's having a, a, a bad moment, one day, and he's, he's, uh, he's getting rid of some breakfast, I guess. And, and, and Robert Duvall asked him, he said, what's, what's wrong, man? What's going on? And he said, I just got some old feelings coming up. I, I, I believe today that God's going to have you, uh, if you will, uh, vomit some old feelings, some old things that's been attached on the inside you need to get rid of today. That's what I believe. Because we so focus on the physical part but we don't, a lot of times we don't get to see what's in here. It doesn't come out. We can suppress it enough to go through an hour or two and we can go out of church. We can leave church and we say, man, I made it through that and nobody knew I was crazy. <laughs> nobody knew I was fighting that problem right there. Nobody knew I was fixing to lose it. Come on, somebody. And so I want to talk to you today about that, okay? Now, I've got a, a, a bunch of scripture today because I, I like scripture, amen, because you can tell me all day long what God can do, but if I see it in his word, then I know it's truth, amen? The rest of me is just you talking. Come on, somebody. But if you talk and I can line it up with God's word, then I know oh, that's got something to it, amen? 
So I've got three passages of Scripture. There's more, I promise. I could, I could go. There's probably 15 or 20 that I could go. But for the sake of time, you don't want to hear them all today. I didn't say you didn't need to. You just don't want to. But there's three passages of Scripture I want to start with uh, that God wants you healed. Now, when I use healed today, I am talking about physical, but I'm, I'm, I'm leaning in this area of, of everything you need healed of, Okay. What do you need healed of? It, it, you fill in the blank. I got my stuff. Some of you, you say, well, I, I really don't want to share what I need to be healed of. Uh, okay. Well, God can heal it. He's not limited because it's a small thing or it's a, something you can put under a coat and cover up. He can heal it. Amen. So there's, uh, I want to start with three passages of Scripture. My title today would be, Is Healing Really Part of God's Plan? Is healing really part of God's plan? Does he really want you well, physically, emotionally, financially, uh, mentally? Does he really want you well? Yeah. Oh, I think so. Because a person that is well can accomplish more than a person who is not well. You can just look at the physical and, and see that. Mental is no different. Emotions are no different. Does God really want you well? Is, is it really his plan? Absolutely. I, I believe that. In Psalms 107, verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Now, this is what the psalmist, David, says. Or, or, I don't know if it's David or not. I didn't do that much research. It could be a couple of different psalmists, but we'll, we'll just say in the psalms. He sent his word and he healed them and delivered them of their destructions. That covers a whole lot. You can also, you can even look at that as a prophetic word, that Jesus' word, he is, in the beginning was the, was the word, word was with God, and word was God. So you can say, okay, that's a prophetic word, that Jesus was to come. He sent his word, and, and he delivered us. You can look at that. You can also uh, say that this passage of Scripture uh, means uh, that he sent his word. In other words, you can find it in his word that he's a healer. You can see that too. We, we've been studying that um, on, on Wednesday nights as well in the last couple weeks here. So you can find it in the actual word of God that he is a healer, that he is a deliverer. He delivers. I like this. He said he sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Do you know you can be destructive in the decisions that you make because you might not be on top of your game mentally, physically, emotionally? I tell myself all the time, the Marty, don't make, don't make decisions when you've when you got a lot of emotions going on because they're going to be wrong most of the time. Just chill out. It'll be all right. Mm -hmm. Number two, in the third book of John, New Testament, third book of John, chapter 1, verse 2, says, Beloved, he's talking to me and you, Beloved, when you hear beloved brethren, uh, saints, that, that, he's talking to the church, he's talking to believers, okay? So he addresses beloved I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Well, I don't know about you, but there ain't one way to take that. The Lord wants you to be prosperous. Now, I'm not a prosperity preacher. If you're new here today, I don't. I despise prosperity preaching. There, God wants us to be prosperous so we can f advance the kingdom. Okay, and, and so I, I believe that, and I teach that, and and that's a different message. But He says, "I wish above all things that you may prosper." And be in health. Amen. Even as your soul prospers. I mean, he says, I'm going to put that above everything. I want you to be prosperous in health. What is health? There's physical health. There's mental health. Is that all right, Doc? There's, there, you can, it, there's probably more categories now, but we're going to look at it from mental health and physical health today. He wants you to be prosperous in that. He says, above all, I want you to be prosperous in, in money, and, and I want you to prosper in your health. Because it's good for you to be healthy emotionally. I mean, I, I can tell. You, you go home and you can tell if your spouse is not emotionally okay. Okay, some of you are not married. The rest of you, you're not saying anything because you know it ain't going to be good when you go home. <laughs> you gauge the temperature of the relationship, how the house feels, of how the wife feels sometimes. Come on, somebody. Vice versa, my wife can gauge the reaction I'm going to give before I open my mouth. You know the old saying, you saying a lot, not opening your mouth? 
Come on. What is that? That's our emotions. Now, you haven't seen your wife or your honey or your husband all day long, and all of a sudden you're bringing your stuff home to them. They didn't do anything. God wants us to, God wants us to be healthy in that area too. Amen. Hey, Lord's doing something here. I'm telling you, some of you are dealing with some things that you need to deal with, that, that the Lord's tugging at your heart, and you need to deal with some things here. Psalms 103, verse 1 through 3 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. That's your mind, will, and emotions. That's everything you are. And all that is within me, in case you didn't get it, <laughs> everything that is within me, bless his holy name, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Amen. I can show you, I will show you in just a minute, <clears throat> that, that God is so concerned about your health, your healing, your mental, emotional uh, status, your st state, that he, he, he lumps it most every time with salvation or that, that the healing comes with uh, being saved. That's how important it is. He, you'll see that. There's many scriptures, but I'm going to show you uh, about four of them real quick. So I put in my notes uh, four passages of scripture that connect healing with salvation. Now, you believe God's word, right? You, you, we taught you last week. I showed you in God's word, and if God said it, you believe it, right? It, it, whether you believe it or not, it's still okay. Uh, you just go with it, right? Our, your job is not to understand God. It's to what? Trust. Trust God. You're not God. Okay, let's start with that. You're not God. Stacy, that's a good amen moment for Mike. You know, amen. <laughs> We're not God. You're not in the same atmosphere as God. You're, you're, you're not a speck if he had a toenail on his toenail. You're not God. You're nowhere close to God. Why are you trying to outthink God? You can't. Isaiah tells us that my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your, what, your ways. They're not ours. They're his. So, these passages of Scripture, Psalms 103, verse 1 says, uh, again, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Here's the benefits. And he starts listing these, if you go read down to verse 5 or 6. Who forgives all of your iniquities. That's number one. Number two is, read it. You see the connection right in the same verse. He's, he can forgive you of your iniquities. He can heal you of your afflictions, diseases. Watch this. Isaiah 53, 5. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. What was he done? For our what? Our iniquities, your sin. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Uh-oh. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? My, my body is really not ever unpeaceful but my mind my mind can you, have you ever made this statement I, I couldn't go to sleep last night because my mind just kept running I just couldn't shut it off did you know that God so thought about you being, not being able to sleep on your my pillow and your air conditioner on your on your sort of Mattress with your nice, fluffy, big old heavy comforter and 65 degree temperature. He thought, you know, they're probably going to not be okay and can't sleep. And I'm thinking, what else do we need? He said that the chastisement of my people, when he was going to the cross, that your unpeacefulness he took upon him so you could have peace. Yet we live in very unpeaceful, unrestful times and we, we create things, our destructions, and, and yet our mind just can't shut down sometimes and we think the worst. You ever, got a rip, you ever go to the doctor and they say, well, it could be one of two things or you go to whatever you hear and here's one of two things. You always pick the worst you look at the worst possible scenario and you play it out in your mind uh, for the next seven years on how it's going to plan out. And it never comes out like that. 
My grandfather used to say it like this. Son, always remember this. Nothing's ever as good as it seems and nothing's ever as bad as it seems. And I have found that to be absolutely true. Those things that I think, man, this is going to happen, it's going to be so good, never pans out just like that. If you're farming, you understand what I'm talking about. Rusty, Shannon, uh, little Mikey. But well, we're, we're, I just know, honey, you go home. To, honey, I know we're going to cut 80 bushel beans, and you cut 20. Come on, somebody. I know, I know this is going to happen, and I'm, I'm going to get a raise, and you don't get one. Matter of fact, they cut you salary. I mean, we, we, we have a tendency to look at things, and they're up here, and they never pan out. But we also have a tendency to look how bad they are, and they're never that bad. I'm here to encourage you today. Wherever you are, God's already been there, done that, got that covered. Amen. The last part of Isaiah 53, 5 says, <clears throat> And by his stripes you were healed. Same verse. Same context, he's going to the cross, he's been on the cross, all of the things around the cross, and he lumps all of that together, your salvation, healing, your peace, and all that right there. That's pretty cool to me. Because if you can believe you'd be saved, you can believe you can be healed. Did, did you hear what? If you can believe you can be saved, you can believe for you to be healed, emotionally, physically, whatever it is. You can believe that. I was just sharing with someone in my office before church how crazy this thing is, how, how we must trust God. We come down to an altar and we give our heart to the Lord. Well, I don't physically take it out and give it to him. Has any of you? No, no, because you're still breathing. You're still living. We come down and we symbolically, we give our heart to the Lord. We say, Lord, I want you to be my master, a master I've never seen. I want to serve you, someone I've never seen. I want you to wash my sins away, which I know are there. And I don't see the water of heaven washing them away or the blood of Jesus washing them away physically. It's all about what? Believing and trust. And I, and I, and I believe that God done that because I ask you, you going to heaven? Oh, yeah, I'm going to heaven. How do you know? Well, I put my trust in the Lord and I, I asked him to come into my heart. And, and, and so he, he, he said he would do that. Oh, he said he would do it? Oh, yeah. Then you believe it? Oh, yeah. Where are you going to go? I'm going to heaven. Have you ever seen it? Never seen it. Got a little description of it in heaven, but I can't get my mind wrapped around it. I mean, you really can't either if you really think about it. Foundations of 12, the most precious stones ever are the foundation of heaven. Gold of, uh, on the streets are made out of glass. That's like pavement to us, you know. Gold's pavement to God in heaven. That's how beautiful heaven's going to be. But yet you believe that you can be saved... And yet, when we read in Scripture that God can heal you, lumped in the same context, the same Scripture, you say, I don't know if he'll do that. What? Oh, I've got, I've got preacher friends that say, I don't know if he still heals. Well, did you ain't been sick yet. <laughs> you just ain't need to ask him. You've never had to ask him for healing. But we believe it, right? Amen. By what? Faith. Sometimes you get prayed for. You say, well, I'm still hurting when I walk back to my pew. By faith. My emotions are still running crazy. I still have those crazy thoughts that I don't like that person over there. Man, I can just tell this message is hitting home. But I still have, uh, when I hear their name, but Lord, I want to love them. I want to. I just don't. But I'm trying, Lord. By faith, let him heal that part of you that needs to be healed. Because you are to love everyone. That's what the Bible says on two things hinge everything. You loving God and you loving your neighbor as yourself. Let him heal you of that today. Let him heal you of your hurt, of things in your relationships that may have been done to you that you still don't like, that you don't put your stamp of approval on. Why don't you let him heal you of that today? It's just as much as a physical infirmity. That right there can hold you back. Watch this. That can hold you back from the blessings and the presence of God, just like if, if, if you, um, you didn't have any legs and you were dependent on somebody to get you to church. 
You couldn't get here by yourself. It'll hold you back. You'll have limitations. But God can heal you of emotions. I just believe that in my spirit. And I, I sense that in my spirit right now that God is doing a work in some people's lives, some old hurts, some things that they're beginning to come up right now. Matter of fact, you, you've had a few flashbacks already but while in this message. You've, you've had a, I feel the Holy Ghost. You've had, some, uh, you've had some things, some hurt and some pains, and maybe some words, a phrase, or some phrases, or, or you remember a conversation very vividly that happened in your life and, and that, that, that tore you down and demeans you and, and hurt you. And you had not got past it yet. Oh, you moved past it because it happened 10 years ago, 15 years ago, or whatever. You've moved past it, but you hadn't gotten over it. I can move past stuff by distancing myself from it. That don't mean I'm over it. Come on. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So that's three passages of Scripture we've talked about. <clears throat> where, uh, or two passages, I'm sorry. Here's another one. <clears throat> In James 5, 13, is anyone among you suffering? I'm going to break this verse, this whole passage down in just a minute. Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone is any among, among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let him pray over them anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith, watch this, and the prayer of the faith shall save the sick. I'll explain save in a minute. Save the sick and the Lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Look at the, do you see the connection? There's healing and there's salvation connected. Of this New Testament, if some of you hung up in the Old Testament, there's nothing in the New. Well, let me give you another New Testament scripture. 1 Peter 2, 24, who himself bore our sins on his own body on a tree. Who is that talking about? Everybody say it together in case somebody don't know. Jesus. Because it's the cross, right? Watch what it says. You need to get it. It's a simple verse, but it has so much power. Who himself, as you could say, who Jesus bore our sins in his own body. He took your sins. That's how you can trust and believe. In his own body on a tree, that's a cross, that we, me and you, having died to sins, might live for righteousness. You could put a period right there and say, that, that's over, that's enough. Hey, amen, hallelujah. He took your sins, put them on himself, went to a cross, died, Period. But he adds a P.S. I always liked the, did you ever get letters when you were young and you had, you'd read a letter, it's so good, and down at the bottom, you glanced and you knew there was a P.S. How many of you ever glanced and read the P.S. before you finished the letter? Come on, somebody. And then some of you just said, oh, it's so good, I bet it's so good, I'm just going to read all and then find out what the P.S. says. It's got to be really good. You know, it's like, a, it's, a, it's, it's a thought that, that, that they're wanting you to get, but it's an afterthought and it's got to be good. Amen. He's got, I got P.S. on this. P.S. I got something else to say. By whose stripes you were healed. He, the whole verse, except the last few words, talks about you being saved, that you can be saved because he took the sins of the world, your sins upon him on a tree. You believe that, right? Because you read it in the Bible. P.S. Oh, I can heal you too. Oh, this is so good. You're missing it. P.S. What else do you need? Oh, I got that covered. Am I doing okay? All right, James chapter 5, verse 13. Is any among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing. When I read that verse, I skipped over the first part, and I got to, is anyone cheerful? Let him sing. And I thought of Liberta. This served me dead. Uh, you glad you? Mm, I don't even want to be here. And Liberta says, I'm glad I'm at church. All of you get a smile on your face. You start laughing. It's like, thank God. Somebody's alive. She's cheerful. Let, her, let you sing psalms. I don't know if she can sing or not, but she can sign good. You just go by doing this, whatever it is you do, okay? You sign real good. 
That's why you need to teach me the sign so I can sing. <laughs> suffering, this word says, is anyone among you suffering? Man, this is good stuff. It is a Greek word, pakapatheo, and it means affliction, listen to me, affliction of the mind, emotion, or passion. One definition, another definition. A feeling which the mind suffers. It also means to, to suffer or endure evils or hardships or troubles. This word suffer literally means if you're having issues here, not physically, but here. And I don't know of anybody that doesn't have issues here. If you think you're, you don't and you're married, I can talk to you, have your husband or wife stand up and we can figure this out right now. Because if your spouse calls you crazy, you crazy. If your wife says you're nuts, you're really nuts. So is anyone among you suffering? He asked the question. It's a question. I just told you what suffering means. Let him pray. Let him what? Let him pray. Why would we pray? How would we pray? What would we pray? Pray the names of God. Because he covers everything. So pray the names of God. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. If you're cheerful about the Lord, you ought to be excited about it. You know, there's times where nothing's going on in your life. Everything's good. And men, you're thinking, woo, this is good stuff. You ought to be cheerful about it. You ought to be singing psalms according to Bible. Are you, are you, are you cheerful? Well, then sing some songs. Verse 14, is anyone among you sick? It's a question. The word sick is austeneo, and it means to be feeble, to be sick, to have an infirmity. That's what sick means, right? It's just sick. Sick means sick. Sick. I had my son one time tell me sick meant he saw this car, this vehicle go by and said, man, that thing's sick. What's wrong with it? Sick means good. Sick means, obviously means jacked up with big wheels and tires and loud pipes. I don't know, tinted windows. Oh, it's sick, all right. You get past 50, that's sick, man. <laughs> means to be feeble, to be sick, to have an infirmity. What does the Bible say? Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Elders means those who are more mature in the faith that, that understand how to pray. Amen. Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over you, or over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Why the name of the Lord? Well, if you've been coming on Wednesday, you understand there's those names of God. He covers everything in the name of the Lord. Speak the name of Jesus. Verse 16. Confess your trespasses to one another. Nah, ain't happening. I, I, can I pose a thought? Yes. Can I just pose a, I'm going to read this and I want to pose a thought to you, okay? Confess your trespasses to one another. That, now, now, that sounds like a, um, a command, right? Yeah. Uh, if, if it was a suggestion, it would say, um, probably, maybe you ought to, maybe you should. I don't know if it'll work, but maybe confess your trespasses. No, it's just confess it. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. I want to pose this to you. Could the lack of confession about your sins be a problem and why you can't get healed? Just a question. M maybe, maybe we're trying to suppress and cover up those things that God says, I really want to reveal them. If you'll reveal them to me, oh, it's going to sting for a minute, but man, I can do great things through you. Yeah. Just like that thing in your head, that emotional things you can't get past. God says, I want to use you, but if this is as far as we can go right now, till you get this covered, till you get healed of this, that emotion, that hurt, that pain. I thought you'd like it. The word heal, healed here means it's uh, yaame. 
And it means to cure, to heal, to make whole. That you may be healed, that you may be made whole. To cure you. To be free from errors and sins. That's what this word means. To be free from errors and sins to bring about one salvation. That's what this whole word means. That you can be healed of everything. Physically, emotionally. Oh, you need to be healed from sin. I got that covered too. Verse 17, Elijah was a man of, with a nature. Now, what, what, this is so cool. I, I love, when, when you read about it, you got to slow down. You just got to slow down. Slow down. Why would he talk about in the New Testament, way over here in James, why would he bring up Elijah? Why would he compare Elijah? Why would he bring him into my story? I don't know Elijah. Never seen Elijah. As far as I know, I'm not kin to Elijah. I mean, I guess I'm somewhere down the road, but you know. What's the deal with Elijah right now in my situation? What does that have to do, God, with me right now? Watch this. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. What? You you mean Elijah? The Elijah, the, 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 the miracle working, Elijah, that Elijah, uh-huh, he had nature just like you. You know, what, you know what Elijah's nature was? Go look in the mirror. You know how you act? Elijah did. You know your emotions? Elijah had them. You know Elijah went through depression? He was Superman. He killed 450 prophets of Baal in the next couple of days. He was depressed. He said, I'm the only one left. Just kill me. That's what he said. Jehovah God spoke to him and said, Elijah, come up here. I'm, get close so I can hit you hard. <laughs> you ain't the only one. I got 7,000. I've been hiding out. Who are you? Elijah, you titty baby. Suck it up. I've been wanting to say titty baby in the church for a long time. There it is. Boy, we just suck it up. He's just like us. We're just like him. And he's telling you, suck it up. Let's well, suck it up. Let's get healed of this thing. Let's get delivered and move on. I still got some work for you to do, Elijah. Come on. And he says, and he prayed. He had a nature just like me and you. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. I just want God to answer my prayer when I'm trying to get a crop in not to rain for a month. Come on, farmers, can I get a witness? And to not rain when I'm trying to get it out and to rain in the summer when I need it. He got three and a half years of what he wanted. Come on, somebody. Y'all, this way I read the Bible and think, well, he says he's like me. Why can't I get that? Maybe unconfessed stuff in your life. Maybe stuff you need to be healed of. Come on. And verse 18, and he prayed again, and he gave, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced his fruit. Well, just glory to God, Elijah. That makes me just want to, yay. Yay for Elijah. No, man, you, you're just like me. You got mad yesterday. You were depressed yesterday. You had the mental issues yesterday. How does he get that, God? So let's look at that story and unpack it just a minute. I got two minutes and ten minutes to preach. Can I, can I, can I, can I, are you okay? I mean, you're already going to be late. You're already going to be behind the other crowd because they're already there. So let them filter out and we'll get right on in. Amen. First Kings 18, I won't keep you much longer. I promise. I know your time's precious and I appreciate it. But I'm telling you, I think God wants you to have this message because God's putting some, some seed in. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, God, you, look, in, in some of the mental stuff and the emotions, you're having to process that. You're going to process it. I'm telling you, somebody's going to process it this week. God's going to heal you of it. I believe it. You know why I believe it? Because I believe I got saved. And I believe that I talked to the Lord about you this week about this message. And I believe God's going to do it because his word will never return void. I'm not preaching you my opinion. I'm telling you what God's word says.
1 Kings 18, 41 says, Then Elijah said to Ahab, so Elijah, he's, he's praying, okay? And he says, Go up and eat and drink, for, there's, uh, uh, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Uh, he's saying, Get some nourishment, because uh, it's in the rain. So Ahab went, went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel. Then he bowed down to, on the ground and put his face between his knees. Now, look, he just, before, look, he just killed a bunch of folks. Miracles come down. Wood stacked up, water all around it, trench around it, and God came down and licked it all up, killed all the disciples, licked up the wood, the water, and everything. Bam! Uh, that's a miracle. I don't know if you've ever had that happen, but I hadn't. I just wanted not to rain for a month in the spring. Amen. Come on, somebody. I just want to rain, not for rain for a month in the fall when I'm harvesting. And this guy has a miracle. The Bible said he killed 450 prophets, but you ain't that bad. So Ahab went up to that, and, and, and so he went, uh, Elijah went to the top of Mount Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground, and he put his face between his knees. If that is a posture of prayer, I'm going to quit praying. It's catching the cross. Y'all going to figure it out in a minute. <laughs> About 30 seconds, I done passed out, Shannon. I done fell over right like that. Baby. <laughs> Y'all have to read the Bible. You're going to slow down and read this thing. Say, how do you do that? How do you? Anyway, go. I got to quit. <laughs> then he bowed down to the ground and put his face between his knees, verse 40. And he said to his servants, go up now and look toward the sea. So he went up and he looked and said, there's nothing and seven times he said, go again. Seven times. The first time he said, there ain't nothing. 90% of the church, when you get prayed for here, for physical or emotional, when you get prayed for, nothing happened, you're gone. God doesn't heal. God doesn't fix me. God can't do it. We're done. So the next time, six more times, five more times we'll say, Elijah's servant comes back with ain't nothing. Second time, our servant, your best buddy, your prayer partner, your pastor, come on somebody, said there ain't nothing. Well, we getting a new one of them, whatever it is. Because he's not giving me the answer I want. She's not giving me the answer. We're f you're fired. Second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time, there ain't nothing. Elijah, I'm hungry. By the way, Elijah, what are you praying for? You didn't put that out on the prayer chain. We don't know how to pray with you. Go one more time. Sixth time he goes, he comes back. There still ain't nothing. Your ministry's no good. Your relationship is no good. You ought to just get out of it. See, there ain't nothing trying. Ain't nothing happening. God's not moving. God's blessing must not be here. So let's just divorce. Let's just break relationship. Let's just be mad at each other. Why don't we just go to a different church? Why don't we get a different pastor? Why don't we get something? Why don't we just do different? Because this ain't working. Come on, somebody. I'm speaking to people. And Elijah says, go one more time. Dead gum at Elisha. Elijah, it's the last time I'm going. I'm not going again. I done wore out a path. It's a long way up to the top of the other side of this mountain for me to look over that sea, and I'm not doing it anymore because God is not moving. Go one more time. I wish I knew the servant's name because when I get to heaven, I'd look him up. What did it feel like? You know what it feels like? You want me to tell you? It feels just like you when you pray for something and you don't get your answer. That's what it feels like. It feels like disappointment. It feels like hurt. It feels like, I don't want to do this anymore. God, where are you at? That's what it feels like. Well, God, I've been praying to you and I've been doing my best, but nothing's happening. That's what it feels like, church. Go one more time.
Verse 44. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, the servant said, there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, Elijah says, go up and tell Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. It ain't raining yet. But there is a glimmer of hope the size of a man's. I don't know if you've looked at the clouds. Have you ever played that game where you look at the clouds and try to figure out stuff? And somebody sees an elephant and you're thinking, what? <laughs> somebody sees a, a dolphin and you're thinking, what? <laughs> you see that raccoon? You're thinking, they need to be healed or at least here. He sees this, this cloud coming up out of the sea. What, what is it? What's in the sea? Water, yeah, water. And he sees this cloud, this hand, the size, the, the, this cloud, the size of a fist. Look, it's way off. You can't hardly even see it. I mean, put your hand. He says it's the size of a man's hand, not God's hand, not a big hand, just a hand, just a normal size hand. Like Robbie, where's Robbie? Robbie had to step out. Robbie's got this huge hand, and I tell him, don't shake my hand out. I mean, we ain't no competition, man. I'm a man. Don't, don't, we ain't doing that. Break your hand to quit that. <laughs> Even if it's Robbie's hand, it's not that big. And he says, hey, that's it. He quits praying. Where we would say, oh, come on, God. Come on, God. Come on, come on. I think you can make it. I think you can do it, God. I think you can get bigger. I think you can turn into a rain cloud. We want to help God, right? Elijah says, hey, that's it. <laughs> Pack up. Let's go, boys. We're done. <laughs> His servant said, that, that's what you was after? I thought we was after rain. And I done stayed here all this time, and we're after rain. And you're, you're saying that cloud's enough? God plus whatever you come up with is enough. God plus whatever you need is enough. That's all you need. And he says, tell Ahab, let's go. We're speaking the rain. I'm talking about going to rain. He says, uh, that the rain won't stop you. Verse 45. Now, it happened when the, in the meantime. Everybody say meantime. meantime. That's when you get mean in a time waiting on God. You all mad at God. You all mad at the preacher. You all mad at the stuff because God ain't done it in the meantime. In the meantime, they getting all their stuff together that the sky became black with clouds and wind and there was a heavy rain. He trusted God for the little bit he could see. He, he did look, he didn't have the Bible like me and you got. He had a sign of a, of a hand in the sky and said, that's it, let's start getting together, it's going to rain. There's, that's this thing called trust. Yeah. Belief, faith. He believed that it was going to happen and he hadn't seen it yet. Matter of fact, he believed it so much, he said, gather up the camp, boys, we're fixing to go. Hey, Ahab, better get that chariot in high gear, buddy, because the rain's coming, it's going to be a heavy rain. You know, we ain't had one three and a half years. There was a heavy rain, <laughs> not a shower. In the summertime, I can get a tenth of an inch of rain shining on my farm. And somebody said, did it rain? I got a shower. Woo! You still stomp the ground, dust flies. You didn't get nothing. Come on. Enough to make your windshield nasty. Not even enough to put on the windshield wiper blades. He says, a heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. What? No, the hand of the Lord waited till the rain started before he came upon Elijah. 
Oh, we got it backwards at the Pentecostal charismatic arena. We want the hand of the Lord to come upon us, and then the miracle will happen. That ain't the way it happens here. He prayed, he trusted, and then what did he do? He gave him supernatural strength. Watch this. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he girded up his loins, <laughs> and, he read, and he ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. I'm going to close because God's doing something right here, but I gotta, I, I'm going to bring two points out. Can I do it real quick? So uh, look in verse 45. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. Ahab's got the best horse and the best chariot. Come on, somebody, stay with me. He got the best one. He's the man. He gets in his chariot and he rides it. The Bible says, and he rode away. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he girded up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab. If I was to be dressed in biblical days, they typically had what we would call some kind of skirt system, and they had a belt. You can tell right now I ain't been running. They would take the backside of that skirt, pull it up, and tuck it in here. You getting the picture? You need to read this Bible like I read it. Mike, you getting that picture? And now it looks like a set of pants, a big pants, big baggy pants. You see these people at Walmart with these pants on. They got it tucked in tight. He girded his loins and takes off running after a chariot that's got a fine horse in front of it, probably a fine driver, done rode off. Bible said he rode away. Then... I don't know about you. How many of you ever raced a horse? I'm talking about beside it, not on top of it. <laughs> you ever had a foot race with a horse? You don't win unless it doesn't have any legs and it ain't really a horse, is it? You might win on that thing they used to put out in front of Kroger. <laughs> but you ain't winning against a real horse. Come on, somebody. You ain't winning. It ain't going to happen. I had a horse one time that's super fast. You better be hanging on because she'd jump from here to the back of that wall just right now. I, I ain't even got down to my stance yet. This guy outruns Ahab to Jezreel. It was, depending on who and what you, it's anywhere from two to seven miles. Stacy, you run marathons, half marathon, whatever it is you do. I'm praying for you every day that the Lord give you a new spirit about that. Lord, it just makes me. <sighs> he outran a horse. Why? What was the deal? Because he prayed, saw a cloud the size of a man's hand. He trusted God when he trusted God. And the Thing that he had been praying for by faith that he had not yet seen started raining. It started to come to fruition. When that happened, then God came upon him supernaturally and gave him supernatural physical strength to do what he needed to do, and that's get down off the mountain. May I suggest to you before we close, can I have a piano somewhere? Where you at, darling? You ain't got to run up here. Just take your time because I mean, just take your time. May I suggest to you today <laughs> that in the meantime, while you're waiting, while it seems God's not hearing those six other times or 60 other times or 600 other times that you've prayed, may I suggest in the meantime that you keep praying. Bobby, what do you say? Pray until you get the answer. Amen. Nowhere in God's word does it say you have to pray just one time or two or 102 
Elijah prayed seven times we know. In the meantime, may I suggest to you that that is a time where God is doing something. God is delivering you for some stuff while you're praying for that very thing to happen, to leave your life, to get out of your mind, that hurt, that pain, to be, to be sequestered, to, I mean, not to be sequestered, but to be suppressed and, and gone out of your life. That very, that very time you're praying, saying, God, I want to be relieved of this. I want it gone. And you don't see it leaving. Pray one more time. By faith, you don't see it yet. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I don't see it yet. But I know it exists because God's word said healing is for my mind, is for my emotion. God said healing for me. And I don't feel it. But I'm telling you, Arva, you didn't feel healing when you're going up there in them treatments, when you come home two days later, you felt bad. You didn't feel it, did you? You felt sick, did you? You felt normal. But God. But God. So will you stand with me across this building? I've kept you way longer than I intended to, and I mean that honestly. I really have. I really don't, it don't matter. I'm not hurt by it. I'm just telling you. I am respectful of your time, and I thank you. I really do. God is doing some things, and you're still doing some things right now. So, so I want to I I pray with you just this one area. And if you've got to leave, hey, be re so respectful and just ease out quietly. Uh, just, just go over there. And if you've got some people that's here praying, go ahead and get them a table and pay for their meal and do all that. They'll be over there directly, okay? Uh, just as I was preaching this message, this is what I felt in my spirit. That, that the Lord wants, wants me to pray, wants us to pray. We're going to call for some elders of church. We'll, we'll, wants to pray for past hurts. Past, uh, and and you, you define your past hurts. I don't know what all they are. I just feel like the Lord wants me to pray. You've been hurt. Uh, maybe it's church. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe in a divorce or, or maybe in just in relationships. Maybe um, uh, a parent, child. I, I don't know. You've been hurt, and you can't get past it. You, you can't, you've tried six times. You've tried 60 times, and you can't get past it. It's such a deep wound, it's a scar. And God says, I wanna heal you of that today. I want, to, I want to heal you of that hurt and that pain. I want to do some surgery on you. So if that's you, with every head bowed and every eye closed, you can, you can, no, I, you, let's don't do that. You can keep your eyes open. You keep them closed. If you need prayer for an emotional or, or healing in, in the mind, the emotions in that area, I want you to come forward. I want to, I want to anoint you with oil. I want to pray with you because I believe God. I just believe God can. If that's you, I know you're here. I know you're here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I have preached what I believe you have laid upon my heart. I have preached from your word, and Lord, it is now up to you. Lord, I preached the six times, so to speak. Lord, it is time for response. Doesn't mean that you're something's wrong with you. It, it, it because you come for a prayer in that area. Doesn't mean that at all. It's no different than someone coming up and needs a physical healing. It, it, that's part of us. If that's you, I want you to come and just just come right up, right up to the front. I'm going to ask my prayer team that's this. I want you to start coming, and I want you to start coming around. I need some ladies around here and some men. Uh, I just need you to start coming up here and just gathering behind some of these ladies. If, if you're in prayer, I want you to be up on the front. If you're going to help me pray, I need you to be kind of right back in here behind them. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can, can we across this building, can we just, we just lift up our hands and begin to thank Lord, thank the Lord for what he's doing right now? We had not seen it yet. 
Lord, we thank you for the cloud of emotional and mental healing. We thank you, Lord, that it is about to rain in their spirit right now. Lord, not a, not a shower, but a heavy rain. It's going to wash away hurts and pains, and, and we're, going to, we're going to learn, Lord, we, we can move on from here. Father, we thank you. We thank you in advance of what you're doing in every person, in every person, every heart, every mind. In the name of Jesus, 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 hallelujah. Just begin to pray. I tell the Lord what you want, what, what, what's, he already knows, but sometimes we need to tell him, this is what I'm hurting over, Lord, this is what I'm struggling with. We just need to tell him. This is my this is my hurt. This is my pain. This is, this is where I'm at, God. You know, but I need you to know that I know. And I'm still here with it. I want you to begin to do that right now. Every hurt, every demonic spirit that tries to keep itself attached to the people in this room, Lord, from being delivered and set free, Lord. I command them in the name of Jesus because there's power over everything, over the enemy in the name of Jesus to turn lo them loose in their mind, in their emotions, in their bodies, their feelings. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Church, I want you to say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, thank you, God. Thank you for what you're doing right here, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Every. Person. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, spiritually speaking, I believe there's a cloud and it's about to rain. <laughs> Ooh, it's about to rain. It's in people's lives. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray against that skin cancer in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You got to go in Jesus' name. You got to go in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, we love you and we thank you for what you've done in this house, Lord. I bless your people. I pray that your face would shine upon us. That we would find favor with God and with man. That increase prosperity, promotion, raises would come our way. And Lord, that peace would rest over every rooftop. That when we lay down today or tonight, that sweet sleep would come to our physical souls, our physical bodies and our spiritual souls. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says, Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. See you on Wednesday.